Hi everyone, so I have an amazing question for you today. And what makes this problem really amazing is that on paper this is a functional equation, but it's really for all practical purposes a number theory problem. Yeah, we're gonna use a lot of number theory concepts, whether that be Wilson's theorem, divisibility, and some other things that we know in number theory in order to solve this. So it's mostly gonna be a number theory question, right? 99% of it involves number theory, there's very less aspects of functional equations over here. I think that's what makes this problem truly fascinating. It's a little bit rigorous. So you're gonna have to stay in there, but uh, I think at the end of it, you're definitely gonna learn quite a bit. So let's just get right into it. And this is the problem number four from the North Macedonian Math Olympiad in the year 2019. But I also believe that this was a question selected for the Balkan Math Olympiad shortlist. And it was also asked in the TST from one of these Balkan nations. So it's a very well discussed problem in Europe. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at what this Wilson's theorem is, how we can reduce modulo P, Functional equations, or the, like I said, the aspect of functional equations is very, very limited over here. Then obviously we have some book sessions of senior math olympiads and at the end, a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. So like I said, this is a little bit rigorous, so let's take it one step at a time. So we need to find all functions f defined from natural numbers to natural numbers, such that n factorial plus f of m whole factorial divides f of n whole factorial plus f of m factorial. So a lot of factorials involved, and this divisibility symbol is also there, which kind of hints me that we have to use number theory some or the other way. Because divisibility, you know, that just that's just pointing me towards certain things. But before I talk more about that, let's just talk about Wilson's theorem. Right? So what's this thing called as Wilson's theorem? Well, it just states that P minus 1 factorial is congruent to negative 1 modulo P. Right? So in any question, if you have a prime P, and if you see a factorial, it's a great tool to apply Wilson's theorem in order to reduce that particular equation modulo P. Right, so that's essentially the use case of this uh, theorem, which you call as Wilson's theorem. But that's pretty much the end of it. And let's just start with our problem. So I'm gonna first use the substitution, set m is equal to n is equal to one. And when I do that, I'll get one plus f of one factorial is actually dividing f of one factorial plus f of one. But we also know that one plus f of one factorial is dividing 1 plus f of 1 factorial. Do you actually notice what I did there? I just said that a number divides itself. Right? For example, 7 divides 7, 100 divides 100, any number k will divide the number k. A number divides the number itself. This is what I did. Right? Also, another thing, we know that if c divides a number a, and if c divides a number b, then that implies that c will divide the difference of a minus b. Let me just give an example. So for example, 7 divides 42, and 7 also divides 28. But that implies that 7 divides the difference of 42 minus 28. So 7 divides 14. Yes, that's true. So 7 will divide the difference as well. I think that's very clear to see. So basically, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the difference of these two quantities on the right hand side, right? And I will get 1 plus f of 1 factorial is actually dividing f of 1 minus 1. So you can compute that. You can take the difference of these two quantities. You'll actually notice that these two terms get cancelled. So you'll be left with f of 1 minus 1, effectively. Right? But if I was being a little bit careful, I'll have to actually have to notice one thing. So whenever I say that c divides a minus b, I'm under the assumption that a minus b is non-zero. Because if a minus b is zero, then you'd have c dividing zero. But well, all numbers divide zero. 7 divides 0, 100 divides 0, any number really divides 0. 0 is an infinite number of devices, and it's the only number that is an infinite number of devices. It's a very interesting fact, actually. So this is something which is non-rigid, right? If we have uh, a minus b 0. So we are obviously considering where a minus b is not equal to 0. Or in our case, f of 1 minus 1 is not 0. So that essentially implies f of 1 is not equal to 1. Yet we are under this assumption. Right? Okay, great. Also, also, I can also state that if a number k divides n, that I necessarily know that k will be less than or equal to n. Right? This is a very simple 
fact about divisibility. So for this result that I have over here, I can essentially state that 1 plus f of 1 whole factorial will be less than or equal to f of 1 minus 1. And let me just label that as equation number 1. That's very fascinating. But I also know that a number n will be less than or equal to n factorial. For example, 10 will be less than or equal to 10 factorial. Equality case, obviously, we have at 1. 1 is equal to 1 factorial. Right? So any number in general n is less than or equal to its factorial. Right? Very simple. But that essentially also means that f of 1 is less than or equal to f of 1 factorial. Right? Just replacing n with f of 1. Now what I'm going to do is from the left hand side, I'm going to subtract 1. And on the right hand side, I'm going to add 1. So we get a strict inequality over here. But, but we know that this thing, f of 1 whole factorial plus 1 is the left hand side of this thing. So what that effectively means that f of 1 minus 1 is less than f of 1 factorial plus 1, which is less than or equal to f of 1 minus 1. So if you actually notice this part and this part, what do you get? You'll actually see that f of 1 minus 1 is strictly less than f of 1 minus 1, which is a contradiction. Right? It's a very clear contradiction. But what are we really contradicting? We are contradicting the fact that f of 1 is not equal to 1. Like I had said before, a minus b needs to be non-zero, but that's a contradiction. That means f of 1 is not equal to 1 is a contradiction. But that essentially implies that f of 1 is equal to 1. And this is our first major result that we have deduced. So even to reduce one result was quite a little bit of work, which is very non-contrary to functional equations. Usually in functional equations, just substitute 0, 0, 1, 1 or something simple, you'll get a result. But this, like I said, is a little bit rigorous, but also a lot of fun, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my second substitution. I'm going to put m is equal to 1 and n is equal to n. And when I do this, I'll get n factorial plus 1 is actually dividing f of n factorial plus 1. Right, we just plug that in and we get this. But from that, I know that n factorial plus 1 will be less than or equal to f of n factorial plus 1, like we discussed before, the divisibility, right? But I know by just subtracting 1 from both sides, I can just cancel 1 from both sides. So I'll get n factorial is less than or equal to f of n whole factorial, but that essentially means that n is less than or equal to f of n for all n belongs to natural numbers. So this is a very cool result that we've received, right? n is less than or equal to f of n for all natural numbers n. Very fascinating result. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set m equal to 1. And let's just set n is equal to p minus 1, where p is a prime. Right, so keep that in mind. p is a prime. And when I do that, I'll get p minus 1 factorial plus 1 is actually dividing f of p minus 1 whole factorial plus 1. Okay, now then. So I can essentially state that f of p minus 1 whole factorial plus 1 is actually k times this thing, p minus 1 factorial plus 1. Right, because this the left hand side is like I said, dividing right hand side. So we can introduce this some constant k, right, which will be the quotient in our case. Remainder is obviously 0. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce modulo p, right? I'm going to reduce modulo p. Why? Because because we have factorial, because we have a prime, modulo p, Wilson's theorem, and our work is done. So if you actually notice that p minus 1 factorial is negative 1 modulo p. So p minus 1 factorial plus 1 will be 0 modulo p. So if I reduce modulo p, this thing is 0 modulo p. So the right hand side is 0 modulo p, the left hand side needs to be 0 modulo p. So that essentially means that f of p minus 1 whole factorial plus 1 needs to be congruent to 0 modulo p. Or in other words, f of p minus 1 whole factorial needs to be negative 1 modulo p. And that is my equation number 2. Congruence equation, actually. <laughs> Quite fascinating. Now, now I'm going to make an if statement. So if f of p minus 1, if f of p minus 1 is greater than or equal to p, you know, under this assumption, if f of p minus 1 is greater than or equal to p, then we would obviously know that p factorial divides f of p minus 1 factorial. Why? Because, for instance, 9 is greater than or equal to 7. It's strictly greater than, but just for this purpose, let's consider that 9 is greater than or equal to 7. This is a true statement, by the way. Right? So does that mean that 7 factorial 
is actually dividing 9 factorial well obviously yes because 9 factorial is nothing but 9 times 8 times 7 factorial right so 9 factorial times divided by 7 factorial is something which is 72 right so this this claim that i'm making is actually true if f of p minus 1 is greater than or equal to p then p factorial actually divides f of p minus 1 whole factorial right and we just saw an example to demonstrate that but okay let me just erase that and let us continue right so if p factorial divides f of p minus 1 whole factorial then then that necessarily implies that f of p minus 1 factorial is actually congruent to 0 modulo p factorial but that necessarily implies that f of p minus 1 factorial is congruent to 0 modulo p why because for example let's consider the number 9 9 is or let's take some other number right let's consider 12 12 is going to be divisible by 3 factorial of course it is or i can say that 12 is congruent to 0 modulo 3 factorial but can i also say that 12 is congruent to 0 modulo 3 yes and what you'll actually notice is this is applicable for all numbers and the reason for that is p factorial is p times you know p minus 1 factorial correct so if i'm reducing modulo p factorial that is essentially equivalent to reducing mod p if any number n is 0 modulo p factorial then it also necessarily has to be 0 modulo p and that's essentially what i wrote so f of p minus 1 whole factorial will be congruent to 0 modulo p and the explanation we just saw it now but but do you actually notice something here from equation number two we had that it is minus 1 modulo p and here we're getting in 0 modulo p contradiction and this is again a contradiction but what was the contradiction what are we contradicting over here we are contradicting this if statement so f of p minus 1 is not greater than or equal to p so that implies that f of p minus 1 is in fact less than p or i can essentially state that f of p minus 1 will be less than or equal to p minus 1 let me just call that as equation number 4 did i label equation number 3 okay let's just call this as number 3 if you want okay so this just becomes equation number 4 so f of p minus 1 is less than or equal to p minus 1. It's quite fascinating. But if you actually remember equation number 2, or actually 1, I think. Right. So from this equation, n is less than or equal to f of n. Right. So we have n is less than or equal to f of n. But if I actually put over here n is equal to p minus 1, I will actually get that p minus 1 is less than or equal to f of p minus 1. Well, this and this don't make quite a lot of sense, right? Because the sign of the inequality is in a way swapped. But what does that mean? That essentially means that f of p minus 1 is indeed equal to p minus 1, right? So, till now, we've made quite a bit of progress in this question. So, we have a few results till now. So, till now, we've concluded that f of 1 is indeed equal to 1. And we've also concluded that f of p minus 1 is equal to p minus 1 for all primes p. Okay, let's proceed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, m is equal to m and I'm going to put n is equal to p minus 1. And when I do that, I'll get something quite fascinating. So I'll get p minus 1 whole factorial plus f of m factorial. This is actually going to divide p minus 1 whole factorial plus f of m factorial. I'm going to call that as equation number 7. And we also know that p minus 1 whole factorial plus f of m whole factorial will divide itself. Right, so p minus 1 whole factorial plus f of m factorial it's obviously going to divide itself let's call this equation number 8 and let's in obviously subtract these two equations like we did a little bit before right it's obviously going to divide the difference of the two as well so we know that p minus 1 whole factorial plus f of m factorial this will indeed divide f of m factorial minus f of m factorial but do you actually notice something we have an infinite number of primes essentially p minus 1 whole factorial plus f of m whole factorial is dividing this thing on the right hand side for all primes p this relation is holding for all primes p but there are an infinite number of primes so what does that mean that essentially means the right hand side f of m factorial minus f of m factorial that has an infinite number of divisors so basically what i'm trying to say is that f of m whole factorial minus this thing has infinite number of divisors because we have an infinite number of primes and i think that's a statement that uh, euler had proven right so what number has infinite number of divisors zero 
like I told before. So it essentially implies that f of m factorial minus f of m whole factorial is zero. Or in other words, f of m factorial is equal to f of m whole factorial, right? So that's another very interesting result that we have received. And this is applicable for all m belonging to natural numbers. Now, if you've, if you've followed through that, we have almost done just a little bit more. I'm going to just use my final substitution and I'm going to set m is equal to p minus 1 and n is equal to n. And when I do that, I'll get n factorial plus p minus 1 whole factorial. This is going to divide f of n factorial plus p minus 1 whole factorial. Right? But I also know for a fact that a number will divide itself. So n factorial plus p minus 1 whole factorial will divide itself, which is n factorial plus p minus 1 whole factorial. Let me call that as equation number 11 and let me just subtract equation number 10 and 11. And when I subtract those two, I'll get n factorial plus p minus 1 whole factorial will divide the difference. And the difference will be f of n factorial minus n factorial. But again, using a similar argument, we see this p minus 1 factorial, but there are an infinite number of primes. So again, this f of n factorial minus n factorial has infinite number of divisors because they have infinite number of primes. So that essentially implies that f of n whole factorial minus n factorial is equal to zero. So that implies that f of n whole factorial is equal to n factorial or in other words, f of n is equal to n. And finally, we have found our function n, right? So we, we found some pretty cool results, right? First, we found that f of one is equal to one, right? Then we found that f of p minus one is equal to p minus one. And really the third thing that we found was that f of m factorial is equal to f of m whole factorial, right? So, and all three results satisfy this again function, the identity function f of n is equal to n. So finally we have in general found a function and that's the identity function f of n is equal to n or in other words, f of x equal to x is the function that satisfies our given functional equation, right? So that was a very cool problem. I know that it might have been a little bit rigorous, but I really think that it, it just it just gave you a little bit more thought process, right? Now you can maybe try and use Wilson's theorem. Now you can maybe try and solve a little bit of more complicated functional equations as well. And this is mostly number three. So like I said before, we were using Wilson's theorem. We were using divisibility. You know, I was using divisibility in every step. So every step of this question, we use some or the other facet of divisibility. And that's what makes this question amazing. You know, there's so much of number three involved for a question that is on paper, a functional equations question. Right, so I really hope you enjoyed that and learned something out of it. Okay, so we have some book sessions of Syria Math Olympiads, Ammo Compendium, Polynomials by Barbeu, Elementary Number Three by Sierpinski, Graph Theory by Harari, Combinatorics by Brualdi, Secrets and Inequalities, and Functional Equations How to Solve Them by Christopher T. Small. Okay, so we have a similar but challenging problem, and this is a divisibility problem, and this is also from the IMO, I believe, if I'm not wrong. And we need to solve for prime p with integer x so that x is less than or equal to 2p. And we have this divisibility condition over here. So maybe try it out. And if you're able to do it, let me know. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much and bye bye. Chinta programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one on one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.